Hello everyone, welcome at my lightning talk where we're going to talk about how to put your Kater application on Kubernetes but without a GVM, um, which, is an ob which is a topic that has fascinated me for the last few months and um, I would like to share some of the things that, uh, that I learned, that I saw and also, also how it works. Um, and of course, how it performs because I guess we're all excited for that. Um, first of all, just quick about myself. I'm Bjorn van der Laan. I'm a software engineer at Cibia, one of the sponsors of today. Um, worked for like five years on the GVM. Three years ago, introduced to Kotlin. Um, still very happy about it. That's why I'm standing here today. Um, if you want to connect with me, I didn't have a Twitter handle to, to, to post, but I have, a, I have a LinkedIn profile. And also, um, if you want to know more about the code that we use today, because we will not go into the code base itself, we will look at the performance of the deployed applications, then you can have a look at these two GitHub repos. Uh, I will mention the names uh, later in the talk as well. The first one, I uh, don't want to take all the credit, the first one is from uh, Simon Vergauwe, um, one of the other speakers of today with the Arrow 2.0 trajectory talk, I think. And the other one is just me adapting it to also put it on the GVM again, so we can have them um, yeah, besides each other and see, um, see the difference, basically. So, yeah, let's get into the meat of the presentation. The clicker is not working. Nice, but I have the keyboard. So, I guess for most of us, um, if we're working with Kotlin, then the ultimate target will be the JVM, right? If you're building a, a server-side application or maybe an Android app, but of course, over the years, um, and I've seen many talks here today as well, Kotlin came to target many, many more platforms. And so here is a, a nice example of a few. Um, hey, you see, for example, Wasm, one thing I'm really looking at at the moment, uh, but also iOS, so you can have the code base of the apps for both the platforms, um, but also more of the native ones. Yeah? So Linux or uh, Mac OS or, um, or Windows. And that, for me, was pretty interesting because usually, if you have a Kator application, you would target the JVM. You would make a jar, you put it with the JVM yeah, in a Docker container, and you deploy it somewhere, and you're, you're pretty happy, I guess. But, yeah, we have all these other targets. So, would it be interesting to maybe target another one? And what are the pros and cons of that? And so... It is possible, this is what I found. And especially for the Linux target, eh? if we can have it compiled to Linux directly, we cut out the GVM, and we can just put this into a Docker container as well. And then you have, well, hopefully, a much smaller application um, that would behave, well, the behavior will be the same, but maybe non-functionally it can be very different. And if we're doing something like this, if we're making a, um, a Linux file, for example, then we're talking about Kotlin native. And lucky for us, Ktor also, um, also supports this, actually. So here, this is what I saw on the internet a few months ago. Um, Ktor has a native server uh, with which you can target this Linux platform. And it got me thinking, okay, so I now have two options for my Ktor applications. When should I, when should I pick it, right? What, what does it do? And that's what this lightning talk is all about, and I will show you all the numbers that I found. Um, so basically, yeah, time for a duel. Uh, found this, uh, this nice image on uh, Unsplash yesterday. Really liked it. Two Jedis at the beach or something. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a demo application. I, I already introduced it a bit. Yeah? So we have Simon's repo and my adaption for it. And the application, and you don't have to know the internals probably, but what it is based on is Ktor. That's what the talk is about. We're gonna use Arrow, um, functional programming framework. And then it has uh, SQL Delight um, with the um, Postgres driver. And the reason I'm using this is that, for as far as I know at least, um, this is the only library and driver that is compatible for native. So it would be a good candidate uh, for our experiment, right? So we can do both the platforms with this one. Uh, the, the application itself is actually pretty simple. So it has two routes. It's about uh, our favorite example, the user. And um, it has a post route where you can create a new user, 
pretty simple. It has a username and an email. And you can also get a user by its, uh, by its ID. Yeah. So we have this application, we have two variants, and then the idea is actually pretty simple. For both repositories, we will call uh, Gradle to make a uh, bundled file for us, a compiled file. So for the JVM, it will be a jar. And for Linux, it will be a, what they call, Kexi file. Um, I wasn't familiar with this file extension, but it's uh, relatable to the exe file that you might know from Windows, for example. And if you would target Windows, then you would also get an exe file instead. So this is uh, probably the Linux variant of that. And then once you have these files, and that's the beauty of Docker and, and Kubernetes and all that kind of stuff, well, you only have to write a Docker file, in this case, one with, um, with a JVM in there, and in the other case, one with just um, Ubuntu, or any, any, any Linux distro that you're, that you're looking at. Um, you do need this uh, libpq dev um, package, because that's for, for Postgres. And then the rest is just put in the, XC, put in the KXC file, and then you have your container just as well. And then for Kubernetes, of course, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same, right? You can have your deployment. Here I have an example of a pretty basic one, which you can do, you can go wild, as you, as you might know. Um, and the real actual difference that you see is, um, is the image that we target. So that, that, that's pretty simple, right? As long as we can compile it to the target of our wish, and we have a Docker file for it, which well, is likely easily made, then we can start running it on Kubernetes. And yeah, from the outside, it will functionally, well, it's, it's what we expect, it will functionally do the same thing. So then we're wondering, what about performance? How, how, is this, how does this relate to each other? And for that, I set up a, a small a performance test with a very nice um, a CLI tool that I found. It's called D DDOSify, um, which is kind of a, yeah, scary name, uh, DDoS, but uh, it's actually about yeah, just a very simple tool that allows you to do a lot of requests in a certain fashion. Um, pretty versatile tool written in Go. Um, I would recommend, I like it. And then our performance test is just this command, actually. Uh, DDoSify and then the URL that we're gonna call, yeah, so the get route to get from the database. And then you have a certain amount of flags. Um, basically, you can configure the duration, how long will the uh, performance, uh, performance test take? Um, how many requests are you gonna do within that time frame? And then how you wanna spread out those, um, those requests over the time. And you can have linear, then you have this, yeah, every second it's kind of the same number of requests. You can also do incremental, which is what we will do. So it um, turns up the volume uh, gradually. And you can also have waved, where it does like a wave fashion. Um, I, don't, I don't know why I would use that, but, um, but incremental sound cool. So um, pick that one. And then what do we want to measure? What are we interested in today? Um, and for me, I came up with five things that I would like to show you. It's the image size, yeah? um, pretty relevant because uh, you have to store this in your registry, you have to pull it out, you have to do all kinds of stuff with it. So yeah, if it's smaller, it could be a nice, uh, nice, nice benefit, also in, in costs, maybe. Startup time, as especially if you have, for example, a serverless uh, application where it has to spin up from zero, yeah, then maybe you want to know how fast it is before it's, uh, before it's ready to go. And then you have three more, uh, memory usage, um, CPU usage, and also the request duration. So how long does it take for it to complete a request? So, yeah, let's just have a look at the results and then, um, then we can probably discuss them. Oop. I don't know why I animated this one, but uh, I'll just click it ahead. PowerPoint is always, uh, it's even, um, yeah, never mind. Uh, <laughs> it's not my, uh, not my best. Anyways, one obvious thing, so this was, was easy to measure because you, because you can just look up the number of, of the size of this container image. And you see that there is a very significant difference a, uh, because of the lacking of a lot of stuff that you need to put into the uh, JVM-based container. It's actually 
only well, one third of the size now. Pretty nice. I, I, I would say that's definitely a, a good win for, for the Scotland native application. And also, if you look at startup time, um, probably for the same reasons, a lot less in there. Five minutes left. Um, you see that there is pretty much a difference. This, this graph is from uh, Prometheus uh, Expression Browser. It's not the best visual representation, but uh, I still wanted to show it to you. Um, what you see is that the GVM, it took four seconds to, um, to boot up, while the other one just needed two seconds. So that's half. Um, and um, yeah, it, 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 you might be surprised that it's very much like exactly four seconds, but that's because in Kubernetes, um, yeah, it, it goes in seconds. So you cannot zoom in any further. But yeah, it seems that at least there is a uh, times two speed up in here. And then for the memory. Yeah, memory, yeah, usually if you want to run something, the memory is kind of a cost factor. And also there, um, native is very interesting. Obviously the JVM, it, it, it does a lot of stuff for you, but it also costs a lot of memory, of course. And so you see that, um, yeah, JVM almost immediately, it, it passes it, and also, um, and also it, it gradually even grows a bit. So, especially if you would query different users, then you would see it kind of, yeah, gradually increasing all the time, while for a native, I don't know where the bumps are coming, where the bumps come from, but you see that it's quite flat, and it's nice, I think. And then for the CPU usage. So for the CPU usage, we, we saw, I, I run this DDoSify tool a couple of times, and that's where you see those, those spikes, basically. Um, you see that they show a very similar pattern, but that the native one is pretty much below what you have on the JVM uh, for this application. I, I tested it out with another one. I have a, if we have time left, I will show it at the end, uh, where you see that in terms of CPU usage in a more CPU intensive application, the JVM will actually, as it's warmed up, it will actually overtake um, native. So for me, that's the indicator that, for example, uh, native could be very interesting if you have to do it once and then maybe scale down to zero or maybe just a one-off task, for example. And then finally, for the request duration, um, yeah, this is a copy from my terminal, sorry. Um, let's have a look. Hey, this works. Um, the, the most important thing that you see here is the blue part. I hope it's a bit readable, uh, but I will, no, yeah, yeah. Should have uh, not turned on dark mode. Um, what you, I will just talk you through it. So for the, for the JVM, what you see is that the, uh, the average duration of the request for the first few requests is actually pretty long, yeah? so 0 0.2 it says. But while it's running, while more requests are coming in, it's, it's warming up and it's actually getting faster and faster every time. And at the 60th uh, round, it's already a factor 20 faster, actually. While at the native one, you get a kind of instant, you get a certain performance and then it stays stable. So you get it instantly, it, there's no warm up time, but yeah, um, it also not, it's not getting better. Um, it's one consideration for the applications as well. Oh, I dropped my glasses. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, so in the final minute that we have, um, let's jump to the conclusion. From what I found, Kotlin Native for running Ktor is pretty great. It has low uh, memory usage. You have inst kind of instant performance. Really nice if you have the serverless task, for example and it has fast startup times. Um, but in the long run, if you're having a more long running application, then definitely the JVM is gonna outperform it. So um, yeah, that's a trade-off you gotta make. And um, that's up to your use case, uh, obviously. I, th I see my time is up. I hope we can get some extra time for questions. Five minutes even. So then for now, I would like to thank you and um, Thanks a lot. And uh, I guess we have time for some questions. Um, 
must say that I'm not, uh, this is also my first experiment, so let's see if we can figure it out. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Um, so thanks for the talk, really good. Um, how does this compare to Graal VM? Yeah, that's definitely, because the, uh, now with Graal VM, that's a different approach to also arrive at a native kind of executable. Um, honest answer is, I don't know. So um, I, I would still have to, maybe as an extension of this talk, I would also include Graal VM. It's definitely something to, um, to think about. On the, on, the, on the functional side, so maybe not on the on the performance and stuff, but on the more of the um, yeah, on other factors, I do think that depending on your situation, you can make a good choice. Um, so with with Kotlin native, one of the downsides is that um, you cannot use your Java standard library and all cool libraries you have and stuff. You have this Kotlin standard library, and then you need the libraries that are especially also enabled for Kotlin native. Um, that could be a blocker. Well, I think for Graal VM, um, I haven't dived into it yet, but there you would really compile a Java application, right? A really Spring Boot thing, and then you can use more of the goodies that Java already offers, I guess. So that would be for me the trade-off for now. And performance, uh, maybe maybe next year's talk. Thank you. Uh, one question uh, regarding the um, the native one, the Docker image was it uh, was it like what kind of a base image? Um, mm -hmm. I will scroll back to it for you. Uh, for this, we used an Ubuntu um, image. I've also used a more flat yeah, one. Could, could you use Alpine, for example? Yes. And how? I how would that compare in terms of size, for example? I would definitely be, be smaller, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the reason that I'm using Ubuntu is because um, this was the image that Simon, it's Simon's project, and he used Ubuntu there. But it's certainly possible, yes. I would, I would even go for that, rather. Yeah, it's, it's not like some dependencies that would be missing or would have to be installed? No, I've, I, I've been... Okay, so not for this specific application, but I've been um, running other Kotlin native applications as well, and then using uh, Alpine, um, and it worked perfectly fine. Okay, thank you. Did you see a significant difference in build times? I know if crawl VM Spring Boot could be hmm. five plus minutes easy. Um, actually, I haven't checked it. No, that would be no. I didn't check it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. That would actually be a, a good sixth one. Because for, uh, as you say, for Graal VM, it can take quite a time to do. So you, you shift a lot of the runtime thingies, you shift it to the compile time, and it makes it a lot longer. I can imagine it also worked that way. I think that for other questions, uh, I'm available all day at the XIBIA stand. And, uh, and throughout all the talks, of course, M might sit together. And uh, for now, I wish you a great day. Thank you for attending.